Hello and welcome back to the Rope Access and Climbing Podcast, YouTube edition. I am your host, Mikey Stevenson, and today we are talking about the Petzl ASAP. If this is your first time here, please make sure to subscribe and follow us wherever you get your podcasts. So stay tuned. Step into your harness and get ready for a podcast about the vertical world. All right. Well, thank you very much, everyone, for tuning into today's episode. Today is a little bit of a reminder for everyone to inspect their gear. So uh, recently um, on the good old interwebs, there was a post about the Petzl ASAP and the cracks so back in 2016, Petzl released a statement after inspection that an individual found cracking in the front bar or sidebars of the ASAP. So what does that mean? Along here, okay, on both sides, right at this rivet pin here, and on the inside... There have been cases of cracking on the inside here as well and potentially over on the back side of this uh, rivet here. All right, so when you're inspecting gear, it is extremely important to look at that. Now, the interesting thing about this was obviously this came out in 2016. I don't know, maybe a year, two years after the ASAP lock, which is the third generation uh, ASAP, it was released. Uh, so Petzl obviously noticed this problem, did some internal testing, um, and here it states, and I'm reading right off the article, and I will link this article in the description here. Uh, following the return of some cracked ASAP lock units, Further EN-12841 static and dynamic tests were carried out. These additional tests have shown that a cracked ASAP lock arm or locking wheel side plates presents no immediate risk to the user providing the device is used as directed in the product's technical instructions. All right. Extending to on that is a, a reminder, the ASAP lock must always be used with an ASAP absorber or Absorbica L57 shock absorbing lanyards. Obviously, this is back in 2016, so the L57 was the shock pack. Now we have the absorber axis and obviously several other variations of the absorber. Um, so keep that in mind. These devices must be used with these shock packs and be all operations must be carried out based on the manufacturer specifications. You can also find that link, which I will link the PDF, uh, link the Petzl's technical notice in the description as well. So obviously this, uh, Information has come to light again. Like I said, an individual posted this on social media. And that's why I'm talking about it. it is just a nice little reminder for you to ensure that you're doing your due diligence. You're inspecting all your equipment. And it doesn't matter how big or how small the equipment is. You need to inspect it before each use. All right. Um, it's, it's sometimes a little bit of a nuisance, but... Your life is li uh, riding in the in the balance here, uh, and and obviously, with it being you know your primary backup or a backup device at all, um, it's extremely important to make sure that these are in great working condition. In the event that your main line fails, one hundred percent of your life is relying on this functioning properly. So, make sure you're inspecting your gear. If you notice any problems talk to your supervisor whomever that may be a, you know a level two a level three or your technical authority uh, and if you don't have a technical authority you will have some sort of a rope access subject matter expert and yeah 
make sure you are following the manufacturer specifications. All right, well, that's all I have for today. Thank you very much. If you like this episode, smash that like button, hit the subscribe button. I know you want to hit the bell for notifications as I put out new content. Let me know how you are doing in the comments below and, and, and follow us wherever you get your podcasts until next time.